What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fazman, man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through today's MLB baseball slate. I am not going to be on camera because I had uh, I was eating popcorn last night, watching a movie with my girlfriend, and uh, my tooth came popped right out. And it's happened to me a bunch of times, so I'm very frustrated. But I will have it fixed, and I'll be back on screen actually with my face tomorrow. Sheets, how was your weekend, and uh, what do you think of this little slate? Yeah, so you know we I had a. I had all kinds of sweats last night. I basically went, I, 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 I pushed all in again. I got like 65% of the elites of last night in the showdown. Ooh. And, and like at five different points, I had different lineups in first place. Um, and I, ju- you know what? And just that freaking blowout just got these other guys a little bit too much run. Like pool got a little bit too much run. And 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 Looney got back in where he, and and they took Bielitsa out for the last couple of minutes. Really, I just I was in such freaking great shape. He was two percent owned in the showdown, um, uh. and uh, and I just continue to go with your take. And and you were totally right. Um, and it was weird because I don't know if you watched, but like in the second quarter, he played like a decent, you know, a good chunk. Then he was yeah. kind of hobbled. And if you saw him on the bench, he was wearing this huge cast. And I'm like, what the hell? He's he's done for the day. And then they brought him back in for the fourth. I'm like, what the hell? So they obviously have plans to play this guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I have, I played one lineup in that seven game thing and I have him in that and he's slowly picking up like equity. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, right. uh, so, uh, and, and I ended up not getting there, but it was, it was t- definitely a hell of a sweat. I was winning and it was only duped for like, you know, I was duped sometimes, but I was like, I was winning like 20 K at one point. You know what oh, I mean? Like God. it was, yeah, I mean, dude, it was two percent in a showdown. So uh, that 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 was fun. Um, I got uh, I finished in the top echelon in like the bigger b- baseball one. I think it was yesterday. I had all I had all the Toronto and Espinal with a nice ninth inning home run. Uh, put me into like sixth until uh, a couple of people got me. Um, uh, MMA was pretty good um, overall. Pretty pretty uh, pretty decent. And then I had like two golf lineups going into um, Sunday. There were in, uh, one of them like touched the top three at one point, and uh, so they were kind of hustling around. And then I ended up just making a little bit of money there. So overall, pretty pretty decent DFS uh, weekend. But I'm ready to handle the six gamer right now. Yeah, no, that's nice. Um, or maybe awesome. or maybe five gamer. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, exactly. We have to figure out what's uh, what's playing exactly or not. Um, yeah, it's a nice little slate. It's I think there's going to be we're going to have options of different things we can do. Um, I do worry about us losing the uh, that that game because I, I I would like to play Hunter Green. I guess we'll talk about it right off the bat because it is the sort of standalone game. And just a reminder to everybody that Locke is at six forty tonight, not yes. at seven. Um, but Hunter Green. Uh, if this game plays, it would probably be my number one pitcher on the slate. Uh, I, I, as much as we say the Diamondbacks are improved and all this stuff, uh, Hunter Green is no joke. He was, he was absolutely incredible against Boston in the last game until they just got to him in that in that fourth inning. I, I still believe in this kid's talent. Um, if this game plays, that is something that I'm going to be all over, and I will be high on the Reds bats as well. But I am uh, I am a little concerned about it playing as the the weather doesn't exactly look encouraging. So what do you think? What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah. So first of all, the good news is it's an early game. Um, so hopefully we at least get some kind of idea, you know, uh, close close to close to lock as possible. Um, but I have uh, I have Hunter Green as um, my second favorite kind of s. Uh, a uh, pitcher in that range, but certainly ownership adjusted. I certainly like him better um, than the, than the top guy. So I kind of agree with you and it is kind of a shame um, that we're not going to have a chance to, to push our chips in on this a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I, I do like Cincinnati, uh, both from the pitching and from the hitting side. Um, you know, you're going to, you're going to be looking for something to do either alongside of with, or instead of like a pretty chalky Toronto, right. So right, right. I'm trying to look for something. And unfortunately, Cincinnati is one of those teams and we're probably, I don't know, probably there's a decent, decent chance that we lose this game. So I think it's, uh, I think that too. So we'll, 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 we'll just see. And I, have, I, I don't have a lot of interest in Arizona, but, but, you know, quite honestly, after Toronto, there's a whole mess of nonsense. You know what I mean? Not nonsense, yes. a whole bunch of options. Um, I don't, I don't think Arizona is going to be my top choice, even if they do play. Yeah. 
Um, I totally hear you on everything. This is, uh, you know, it's it's weird though because we're gonna jump over to uh, Texas and Cleveland. And by the way, for those who don't aren't familiar, Cleveland is also in Ohio. I know they're not right next to each other, but uh, I've heard that there there is uh, there is going to be some 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 risk in this game as well, which is gonna make this slate really not fun if we lose this one as well. Um, I think this one is it's not as bad as the other one, but I guess there's a bunch of storms that 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 could hit later. So we're gonna have to wait and see on this. But as of right now, you've got good hitting weather. Um, John Gray is is a reasonably priced, certainly a very reasonably priced option, even though Cincinnati uh, Cleveland doesn't strike out that much. And I'm sort of iffy on these guys. I feel like I could I could make an argument for both stacks. I like the hitting weather, um, but. I think I would lean a little bit Cleveland over Texas, but I think it's really close. And I think both these teams are very viable. What, where do you have these guys? Yeah, I think Texas is kind of the pits. Um, I, 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 I would, I would, I would have, I really was struggling, not struggling. I was looking for an excuse to play Cal Quantrill, but I couldn't find one. Um, just, just, I just, I just can't do it when, when Blake Snell's 8K, you know what I mean? Or, or Hunter Green's even less. So I just, right. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Um, but uh, I've, I've gone after Texas with worse pitchers than Cal Quantrill. Or maybe not. Uh, Cal Quantrill's not that great. Um, so I, I don't really like Texas. I don't really like Quantrill. John Gray, I mean, he struck out like 100 guys in his last start. He's 6,600. I mean, you could do worse. Um, so uh, I definitely think that he's definitely viable as, as, a, as a cheap SP2 if you want to play Toronto. You know, if you want to play Toronto. And, um, I don't know where ownership's going to come in especially if that Reds game gets, gets scratched. Um, Cause I do think the Hunter Green is going to garner some ownership if they played. Yep. Um, and so if that doesn't play, then you would naturally look to the next, you know, SP two ish type price. And Gray 6,600 certainly makes some sense. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't know why you, I guess Cleveland looks okay. Texas looks okay, but I, I prefer other teams to these two. Yeah, I think I prefer other teams, but I could see a Cleveland stack that's fairly low on being kind of interesting. And and uh, even with Texas being sort of shaky offensively, I, I there's there, you have some cheap bats and you've got a few talented bats in there that I don't mind. So I'm, I'm sort of I have Cleveland a little bit ahead of Texas, but I think this game is actually more probably more for mini stacks. I don't think you need to stack on these uh, a six game slate that, that's becoming a five game slate. Um, so that's where I'm at here. Well, we get these small slates and then, you know, we get to have our small slate discussion on what are we going to do with Robbie Ray? Um, I'll tell you what, if people aren't going to play Houston, that's just the most natural, easy thing you can do on this slate, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm curious how many end up there because I do think there's some projected ownership on that Arizona Cincinnati game if it doesn't play. But we see it all the time, you know, this is and you, and you don't necessarily want to go against Ray on a giant slate because. While he does get hit, he doesn't always get blown up. Um, the guy gives up tons of stolen bases. He's one of the he's given up as many home runs as anybody in baseball, except for I think he might have given up the most in baseball so far this season. So I, I think Houston is a very natural stack here, and I think Javier is a really good option. Um, I, I do worry about how they use Javier sometimes, and we got to we got the bad experience of the Javier chalk last time out, um, where he only pitched four innings and. I don't even think he, he had one run. So it wasn't like anything was going terribly. And it was sort of surprising to see him only go four innings. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I like, I like Javier and I think I like Houston uh, is where I'm at right now. Yeah. He pitched 85 pitches that game. He had four walks. Um, yeah. Well, did he have four walks? Oh, that's what I yeah. missed. I missed. I must've misread that. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah. The four walks got him out of there. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, Sorry, but I, 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 you know, he, I like him today. Uh, I, I I think Javier is, um, I don't know. I, I still, I still think I prefer Snell, but, but, uh, but Javier certainly, uh, certainly reasonable. And Robbie Ray is, you know, it's a GPP play every, every single slate. Um, and going against him, like you said, if he's getting a lot of ownership, I, I, I don't think he's getting a lot, a lot of ownership this, uh, this time though. Yeah. Um, you know, the Houston has the name value and they have those, you know, and, and it's at Houston and, and Ray has had a couple of pretty, pretty, pretty fishy outings. So I don't think he's going to get owned. Um, and, you know, there, there are variations where, you know, Alvarez and Tucker combined for eight strikeouts. <laughs> that's, that's certainly, 
Mm-hmm. That's certainly that's for for example. I, I, I just picked the first the, the two free swinging lefties I could think of. Right. right. Um, and as you mentioned it's a Monday, which means that we might see you guys sitting. So it could right. be a weaker lineup even. Well, one of them might be tougher though. Yeah, that's true. Most likely. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I I think Houston's very very natural. Um, I was talking about this uh, the other day. Just when you have one team that's like huge, you know. I would say a huge chalk in like a negative way, but one team that projects to be the, the top stack, that being say Toronto, then you look at like who's going to be the most natural pivot, right? And, and trying to think of who that's going to be, because the idea is kind of try to pivot off the pivot a little bit. I'm right. trying to think of who that's going to be. Um, I guess it can't be Houston. I guess it could be. Now, I don't think Houston's going to get, I don't think Ray's going to get high, that high owned. I don't think Houston's going to get that, that high owned. But in a five-game slate, you're going to have to play. You know, people are going to play both of them. So I think that both Ray and and Houston are are viable. And I Javier scares me a little bit, but I think he's got to be on on the small slate, one of the top yeah. options. Yeah, I, I so I agree with basically all of that, except for I do think that Houston it will be hard for people to play Houston, just even pricing wise. Okay. Um, Alvarez and a lefty, lefty at 5700. Uh, Altuve at 5,300, Bregman 49. Like, you're going to need to mix in. And they do have a couple cheap options. We don't know how the lineup's going to shake out where you could use the Siri or Guriel or even Maldonado as a as your catching option. But I, I think this is a very viable stack. And uh, it also – I have to do a little digging on uh, the Robbie Ray's – because he should he should have a decent amount of experience versus this, these Houston guys. I'm just going to take a quick look at his BVP and see if anything stands out in uh, on a large sample. It's not actually as large. No, it's actually it's a pretty small sample. But um, yeah, um, I, I I do like Houston as of right now. I think that they're the given ownership one of one of my favorite, potentially my favorite, because Robbie Ray is giving up an incredible amount of hard contact, and like I said, you can you can run on him as well. So uh, there's multiple outs to get there. All right, what are your thoughts on the uh, Toronto KC situation? Yeah, first thing I'll say is that um, is that I don't mind KC here. Um, I, is, is this going to be a bullpen game? Maybe. I, I don't know what's actually going to happen. Um, um, Stripling, what do you do? Two innings, one inning. You know what I mean? He's been not, coming out of the bullpen. He hasn't been starting those games. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what, what's actually going to happen here. This, if, if he, and if he's a guy that gives up uh, that you could run on somehow, I mean, I think that, that yeah. wit, that wit, wit makes sense. Mm-hmm. And again, just looking for non Toronto stuff. I think Casey's just as viable as some of these others, you know, you play, Salvador Perez. I mean, there's, there's stuff you could do here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like either of the pitchers here. Um, and Toronto, as we just kind of alluded to without saying it, is, is the best the best hitting stack on the slate, and they're going to be owned pretty hard as a result. Um, so as, as usual, it depends, yep. depends on what you want to do. You know? um, but uh, they're certainly the, the top stack, and construct your GPPs accordingly. Yeah, I think that you're, it's going to be hard to avoid all Toronto bats. I mean, the preferred guys are, are nothing new. I mean, career-wise, we have Springer, Vlad, and Chapman all as monsters versus lefties. Yeah. Um, Tiosk are pretty good as well. So, and Bichette for that matters. It's just you got a lot of a lot of good powerful righties in there against Lynch. Um, you know, I'm always on the okay, you know, maybe maybe not like blindly stack against Lynch every time, but this is one where it's really hard to just not want to play Toronto. But I, um, if you're looking for reasons not to, outside of his first start of the season, Lynch has only given up two home runs in his last eight starts. Um, that's something. Uh, because you're, you're going to see just an incredible amount of chalk on these Toronto guys. But hard not to – it's easy to understand why. It's just hard to play that on a small slate that's getting smaller and, or could get smaller. Uh, so I probably I, I will probably just uh, limit my Toronto exposure to maybe a couple bats and, and not go any higher than two bats in any lineups unless I'm getting way off the board. I guess you can combine stack like Houston and Toronto and probably be low enough. But, yeah, it just doesn't feel great playing that that crazy chalk on this kind of a slate. I mean, they are they are um, they are uh, on a travel day. Or they are traveling after being at home for like quite a long time. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, that's something. The other guy that, by the way, again, I'm biased because he did well for me yesterday, who could swing it pretty well also from the right side, is, is this Espinal guy. Maybe he won't be his own as some of these others. Um, mm-hmm. If you really want to get fancy, you know, BGO is not is, is swinging a little bit better now. He's, he's nine. I, yeah, I don't think they'll play BGO, but maybe they will. I don't know. 
But if he's but he's been he's been doing better. And if he hits nine to twenty something hundred, I mean that's a way to on jockey, yeah. that's for sure. Um uh lefty lefty especially. So um um yeah, and, and, you know, I talk about this when you're not on with me. I mean, how do you, how do you handle got teams like Toronto or teams like Atlanta or whatever? You know, you could either just fade them or you could play, you know, uh, low owned pitchers with them, or you could you could do some funny business with your stack um, construction. You know, like one three sixes, one three eights. You know, yep. maybe only two man or something like that. So it depends on how you want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think I, the only way I'm going up to three is if I can get a really low on other stack because it's, it's tricky. And I, I don't disagree that it's not a bad spot for Casey. I, I, I still think, you know, Stripling is a very competent guy. He's not, he's not this, just this bum. He just, it's just the innings and stuff with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't, I don't mind, you know, a little bit of the, the KC side. I, I do think that I will probably in my main lineup have a couple Toronto bats, but I'm not, I'm definitely not fully stacking Toronto anywhere tonight. It's just, I can't see how that's profitable in the long run, especially if you're not max entering whatever tournament you're in, maybe in a single entry, you can get away with it. I just want to just remind people, you know, about baseball. If you guys weren't around for Friday, you had a hundred thousand run total in Colorado that went zero, zero to extra innings. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> baseball is a rough sport, man. It's, a, yep. it's, tough, it's tough to hit that little ball. <laughs> it's not so easy. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. What, what jumping over to Boston and the angels here. I, are we, we going to do, we're going to do this again. Right. I mean, well, one thing is it's, it's funny because like, we've seen like, you know, he, the strikeout stuff is the stuff that worries me with Syndergaard right now, because he's had some really good outings but it hasn't really had that big strikeout outing and, and just doesn't seem to have enough as much velocity as much break. Um, and it's Boston. So it's not exactly ideal. I still think that the overall talent is he still has a, you know enough talent to get there. And it feels a little funny when we start thinking of some of these guys, like Sonny Gray is not like, is, is in a tough matchup as well. And is, is, is I'm sorry, John Gray. Is, is that necessarily that much better of a play than Syndergaard? I don't think so. I think they're pretty close to be honest. And I think Syndergaard's a better real life pitcher, but it, it's so, so I'm sort of stuck. I'm up in the air on this one. I might, I may, may, may use Syndergaard with, uh, with green if he plays, or I may use Syndergaard with gray, with, with gray. Um, if I want to double spend down, I'm open to it. I, I feel very, very mixed and I'm not particularly interested in either of these offenses with the pitchers that are just, just capable enough of getting by. I feel like so, uh, Again, I, I, the more I look at it, I think I'm just going to end up on the Houston side of things. I think people will play the big bats from LA, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't want to play guys at 30 plus owners percent ownership. And I think you're going to see something like that for Otani and Trout tonight. What do you think? Yeah, you, uh, you think you'll get something similar for Walsh at first base? Probably. Uh, I think Walsh will be a little bit lower owned. I, I like that. I, I don't mind the Jared Walsh idea. Hey, what's his name? Is bat from the Miners? Uh, Adele. Your boy is back. He's back. Lock him in. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, he was. Was he gone for a month? Yeah, he was gone from. He was gone for a month. He came back. Uh, yeah. One for four. Okay. All right. Hey, he's still. He's you know, guy. The guy is a talented guy. It's just, yeah. Uh, see if he ever puts it together. No. Nope. So. Um, yeah, I have the Angels as a team. <laughs> like I said. Yeah. Uh, I think I, maybe this is the team people are going to play. Mm-hmm. If it's not Toronto, yeah, because you've also got Duffy who could lead yeah. off again, and he's twenty five hundred, which will make it easier. Yeah. Um, uh, Stassi is one of the better hitting catchers and higher batting higher up in the order today. So I do think that this is the team that the, the people will go to away from Toronto. So I, I actually agree with that. I, I've got I, I've got to say I th- I'm trying to think of really what I want to do here. You know, in the slate, it's either going to play be play Toronto with, 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 with non chalk pitchers, but I don't know who that would be, or just not play Toronto with chalk pitchers or not play Toronto with non chalk pitchers. So, so I think, I think we just get to this last game. I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to just do this. I think I'm just going to end up with the pitchers in this game. I think, I think I'm thinking I'm just going to end up, I'll end up doing both probably as we, I'm sorry, we're transitioning now to, to Met yeah. San Diego. Yeah. I think I'm going to play both these pitchers. Um, and then, and then also not play tomorrow. You know what I mean? Maybe that's right. right. I think that, that, that's what I end up doing. I think both these pitchers are very, you know, 
I don't yes. want to say solid. Whatever. Like Snell's obviously very volatile, right? Um, it is a three and a half run implied total uh, for the Mets, and and Snell's only eight K. Um, and Carrasco, I listen. I've, I've always been not the greatest, biggest Carrasco supporter, but but he, you know, he does. He's he's doing fine, and I'm probably just what I'm going to end up doing. I'll probably just end up with um with both these pitchers in my big lineup. I think um, that that's what I, that's what I would do if I started right now. I think. Yeah, so I I think this is interesting because I I'm going to make the same case for the Mets that I'm going to make for Houston. I I don't see it as being all that different. No, you're right. <laughs> and and I think that you're going to get no ownership. Um, and you've got some righty bats in Alonzo and Marte. They're just going to be completely overlooked on this slate. And I think that they're worth it. So I I, I will take some shots on picking on Snell. And at the same time, I completely agree that Snell is an, is an elite option for upside. Uh, a lot, a lot of good pitching options, uh, a lot of interesting pitching options tonight. Well, so, well, also I should say that, that with, with Guerrero and Toronto being so chalky, I mean, he's going to eat up a lot of that ownership at first base. So maybe you're right. Maybe Alonzo. Yeah. gets even leaving less ownership. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, which also mean, and, and maybe some people will try to play Otani at first base also. You know, yeah, so. I don't think I don't think they're playing him anyway, just because people have enough Snell, enough love for Snell and the name brand value. But he has the same exact issues that Robbie Ray does. And this yeah. may come down to where we may actually really want to look at who's who's pitching. I'm sorry, who the who the uh, the umpire crew is going to be, because you <laughs> if you get <coughs> bad umpires for either Snell or Robbie Ray, that could be a nightmare for them because we both know they can get a little bit you know oh if you get you get a bad umpire for robbie ray you know what you could also do you have some fun you could then you could play seattle how oh yeah exactly yeah you could you could do that i don't know if i want to pick on javier and houston's bullpen as much but i understand it well i just mean i mean javier had four walks in his last game you know Mm -hmm. um maybe we uh get something done i don't know yeah I think that's fair enough, but, uh, but I, I do like the Mets for what it's worth tonight as a contrarian stack. And I also think both these pitchers are uh, high upside options. So I I'm, I'm good with both pitchers. Uh, obviously not going to do it in the same stacks where I play Snell and play the Mets and the Mets, even, even if you just skip past the, even if it was like a big slate and, and, and a bad lefty, it's just at their prices outside of JD Davis and Canna. Um, this Marte and Alonzo's price and even Lindor's are just so high. So I, I think getting some, some Mets bats, you could just get way off the board on this kind of a slate and, and feel good about it by playing Houston and the Mets and just know and hope for the bad Robbie Ray and, 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 and Snell game. And I think you're, you're, you're going to be contrarian and there's no reason why these guys can't go out there and walk, you know, five guys in four innings. And then you're either dealing with a bullpen or maybe you get a couple home runs and sandwiched in between and you're running away with the slate. I think that's a really viable route today. You know, because you mentioned it, I'm looking at Matt Duffy. Um, he's a, he's another first base eligible guy. So he's first base, third base at 2,500. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you play, like, who's third base for the Mets even? Well, <laughs> third base, uh, you could get, I mean, presuming people play, oh, no, I'm just trying to look. Who's, who's third base is, is – Oh, Chapman's third base for um for Toronto. For Toronto. I'm trying to think. So oh, the reason I mentioned the only reason I'm I'm thinking of Matt Duffy here is I'm looking at some other one-offs here that maybe we didn't talk about. Um one guy that's standing out from that Boston game is this the cheap outfielder. Jaron Duran, Boston. yeah. Yeah, Jaron Duran. Um the other guys I think you brought up Hernandez, Guriel for Toronto. Yep. Cole Calhoun for Texas at 2900 Um looks cheap. And if this game goes, which it won't, I mean, Aquino's still mid price over there. Um, yep. Uh, and then Adele, 2,500. Adele, and then also, uh, if that, again, if the other game does go, you also have Senzel at 2,900 as well. Yes, yes. Um, and, I, and I don't mind Guriel as, as, as the cheaper, lower-owned part of the, the Toronto stack. If you're going to yep. do it, you probably need to include Guriel and probably whoever's batting ninth, whether that be Biggio or, uh, or not. <laughs> Um, just, just to get different. Cause it's going to be really hard to get different with the Toronto stack today. Um, I do think Toronto is the, nat- the natural stack, but I will be using Houston. If I use two or three from Toronto, the rest of it will be filled up mostly of Houston as of right now, um, with the potential for maybe some, some Cleveland. Um, but I, I am leaning Houston 
uh, the Mets just to get super contrarian and then Cleveland as my stacks that I'm going to use the most. And on Cleveland, you have the uh, Gonzalez is 2,400. He's not bad. Um, yep. And uh, yes, uh, compact little slate um, with probably even more compact. I guess that's going to make, make the game kind of in, make it interesting if it's like, if it's like 620. Yeah. And there, and like and everybody has it as like an orange yellow or something like that. What people do with that, you know? Yeah. Um, I would like to take a I would like to take a shot at Hunter Green on a yellow, not like an orange yellow, maybe, but I'd like to take a right. shot at a yellow, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I mean of all the pitchers on this slate, I believe he has the highest strikeout prop. Yeah, he does. Oh, is that right? He Hunter Green and Snell. I mean, he's he's got the best strikeout stuff. He and Snell he's do. He's more strike, he's got a higher strikeout prop than, than Ray and Snell. He's got the same as Snell and wow. uh, Robbie Ray is, is one one less. Wow. So I mean Hunter Green has a I mean even in the last game where he ended up getting rocked around, he had eight strikeouts in the, I think he had eight strikeouts in the first, I guess it was two and a third. Yeah. No, two and two thirds. Um, right. He struck out. So he had struck out eight guys. I think one of them, they actually ended up uh, get reaching base. Cause it was like on a wild pitch. Um, but yeah, he's, I mean, he's just got incredible strikeout stuff and his strikeouts per inning have been just as good in the majors as they were as since we've heard about this kid in high school. So uh, if Hunter Green plays, he will definitely make my main lineup um, if that game is going to go. But it's like you said, if it's orange or yellow, it's it's kind of tricky to, yeah. to hit that button for the for the 777 or something like that with him. Yeah. But I, I think Snell, Gray and Javier are, are guys that I'm considering to, pr- to probably use as my main my main pitchers here. And I, I know that people don't I, I still have a mental block with using pitchers against each other. Um, but this slate is small enough where I don't have that block at all. So on big slates, I do think you're giving up a little bit, even though people say, oh, it's only four points. Those four points end up mattering a lot, especially when you're talking about yeah. playing guys in the seven and eight K range where, you know, a 12 point outing and a 16 point outing are very different and could end up costing you a tournament or winning. You and the funny thing is you think about it, like a, a, a win is like the worth same as basically like a strike. I mean, mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It's true, but you don't. When everybody's bunched out up, up yeah. in terms of their expected strikeouts, it, that 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 win should factor in. And and don't and don't forget it's that extra sweat when you think you're going to win a tournament, you forget that somebody who finished their finished their their finished their pitcher like four innings ago is going to get credit for the win that you forgot about. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're, I'm up by three point seven five points. I'm going to win this thing, and they got no time left. Oh wait, that's right. that's yeah, right. that's that's those are the brutal ones if you if, yep. you, if you forget about them. Yep. Um, all right. Well, it should be a fun little slate, depending on what happens. I will be live at six Eastern. And um, so what we got here, stop when you stop recording, I'll talk to you first. Yeah. And just for what it's worth, guys, I'm around all, all week, except for I will be out Wednesday, but I will uh, I will put in all my basketball takes and my baseball takes uh, in the discord on, on Wednesday, because Wednesdays are going to be out for the next couple of weeks. But uh, uh, sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No. Good luck to everybody. And uh, hopefully somebody takes something down.